Well, it's always interesting to present to our National Truck Guide viewers a new face each and every week, this time around from Canoundra, Natalie Senshi. Well, Natalie, great to catch up with you now. We've got something in common, and it's the Bong Bong Picnic Races, the famous Bong Bong Picnic Races. My late uncle, Albert O'Cass, won numerous Bong Bong Cups and treated that particular day like a Melbourne Cup, and you got your start virtually from the Bong Bong Picnics as well. I certainly did. We used to run around that hill with the race as it was running when we were kids, and then when that was over, we used to roll down that hill. <laughs> It was certainly a great day, so how did it come about the involvement with the thoroughbred industry first of all? My father had a, a good friend named Trevor Kane whose son, a grandson now trains called Scott Singleton and he, was, he started with his um, thoroughbred licence going around to the picnic race meetings and then he decided to change over to harness racing because you could train them and drive them yourself. And yeah, that's a big factor isn't it? A good horseman just likes to have that feel and, and know what's required to get the best out of a horse. I find that the person who works a horse knows the horse the best and you can, when you get on fresh it's very hard to understand. There are some good drivers who, who seem to be able to pick up the horse and its traits straight away but on the whole it takes a couple of times before they understand what the horse can and can't do. And Ali, did you always have a passion for horses and then it evolved into harness racing? Yes, I used to do sporting as, as a teenager, which I got champion of the year at both areas that I went to, which was the Pioneer Village at Windsor and um, the Grange Sporting Club. Oh, I just can't think of the area, but it's near Blacktown. And what did that involve? Barrel racing, quadrangle, keyhole, bending flag, you know, all the things. And they did put in a little cross country for us to do as well. So, and how you won the champion of the day was you, the point score. And then you got a champion of the year with a point score from those daily t totals. I can give you a guarantee that I'm good at none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in anymore either, I'm too old. <laughs> Now sadly, Natalie, you lost your father, Barry, at the Richmond Trials. That's correct. He just fell out of the cart and never came back. It worked out he had a calcium breakaway in his artery that blocked the blood to his brain and you may as well say when he, he fell out at the training track he was born. Now you're a little more than just a hobby trainer? sentimental trainer more, yeah probably because after that my now husband wanted to carry on dad's legacy like dad liked to pick up the old horses that people had said aren't any good and get them going sort of thing the Briar Glen he bred himself um, so yeah over the years we've bred horses and got into a lot of financial trouble you may as well say with life's things that happen that you can't control and here in 2019 my mother passed so I used my inheritance to buy some yearlings and um, Iraclea is one of those yearlings. Yeah, you, you spent a big so to speak at the APG sales 2019. Yeah well it was bigger than what I could ever do. The only, only regret I've got is I bought a horse before moments like these went through and I was going to pay 50000 for her and I went to 41 and I was losing Peter. <laughs> so, you know, like, but that's the luck of the draw. Yeah, it certainly is. There's always one that gets away and unfortunately that one's for you, but you've got these young horses and you're hoping to mould them into a moments like these. Yeah, as I said, the one that's in today, Eurycleia, she has problems with hitting a knee. So we're working on those problems to try to shoo her out of it as much as we can. We're hoping that it, on a bigger track that she can get around a lot better. However, she hasn't had the speed training of this track because she's only competing on against what she's been competing against with home. Black Sassy Lassie ran second at Bengio last couple of weeks ago. This horse flogged her in track work and then went terrible at the races, so you work it out. <laughs> The love of being a trainer. Exactly. As I said to somebody, when I learn to talk horse, then I'll know what's going on. <laughs> just going back to Brian Glenn, he holds a bit of history as far as Harold Parker's concerned. 
he, he went around in the last race before the Harold Park track was converted to the last track before we came to Menangle. And he won. <laughs> Even bigger history. Uh, now, as far as the breeding side of the industry is concerned, you're, you're full into that because you've got a number of broodmares. I have had a number of, I do have a number of broodmares, but I haven't bred a horse for a long time because of the drought and I never have enough money to put them in foal. I have very well bred horses. Is there anyone in particular, any mare in particular that you're looking forward to getting some progeny from? Um, this year we'll put Jet Star, Set Star in foal. She's only won three races, but she came from New Zealand with a very high opinion of her and she does have speed. She's just got a lot of problems. Um, the full sister to Lombo Sky Ride, I just can't think of her name at the moment. She's an old mare, but we probably will put her in foal this year because we're probably doing the no-no of breeding. We've got a stallion that's um, related to, what's the good? Well, it goes back to them safely kept. Yeah, Natalie, I mentioned at the top of the interview from Canoundra and wonderful things are happening in that particular part of the world. It is. We've been very fortunate. The West Lime donated $15,000 worth of material to renovate our track, so that's now given me a really good track to work on. And we, we cannot appreciate what the owner of West Lime did for us because without his generosity, we would never have been able to bring the track up to the condition it is right now. It's always great to have a world-class facility like Clubman Angle, Natalie, but all those country tracks where the trainers that are learning their skills or don't have horses good enough to come to Clubman Angle, they still need a venue to compete at. That's 100% right. Without the little people, it doesn't keep on going. The thoroughbreds tried it a long time ago of pushing out the little people and they found that they weren't making up the fields. So you need those little people because those little people breed the horses that come to these large tracks. So yeah, without them, the industry just needs them and they need to look after them a little bit better. Well Natalie, without the bread and butter horses, as we seem to use that terminology, we also need the bread and butter trainers to make sure this wonderful industry keeps going around. It's been great to catch up with you. Hopefully success will be coming your way very shortly. Oh, I don't think it's going to be today, but we can only live and hope.